Hi, welcome back to Hack a Week. We're still here with the Interceptor 052, playing around some more with this little coaxial helicopter. These things are a lot of fun. They're a great way to get into flying uh, helicopters, and they do have their advantages and disadvantages, but like I said, they're cheap. Uh, they're kind of bad in light winds outdoors. If you have a big indoor area to fly them, that's even better, but they tend to resist moving fore and aft like this and usually it's because of the lack of a really good uh, prop on the tail engine. We'll get into that a little bit more later but uh, they're simple, easy to fly, very stable, they're cheap but there's a few things that we can change on them to make them better so we're gonna go over some of that right now and uh, let's get started with it. Let's take a look at the mods you can make to your average coaxial helicopter to make it fly better. Uh, to review shortly, we were talking about how they don't like to pitch fore and aft in the wind. The number one thing that can be done to uh, help that is to get the prop size on the back a little bigger. And it really helps if you can increase the motor size. This particular one I didn't uh, increase the motor. I'm pushing that little motor to pretty much its limits, but it does help a little this bigger prop. You'll get to see how to do that. And then you can re remove stuff and uh, make it lighter, things you really don't need. The tail uh, boom supports, you can get rid of those. The uh, horizontal and vertical stabilizers in the back. <laughs> this thing doesn't really move forward uh, or pitch around enough to really merit having stabilizers, so we can get rid of those too. And the fly bar uh, modification was a, a good one. That was. Uh, shortening the fly bar by taking the weights off the end. Um, I just cut them off with a pair of side cutters, just plastic. There's a little weight inside here. There was one on each end. They were pretty heavy. And the fly bar, as I'll discuss later, uh, corrects for changes in uh, attitude of the aircraft. Keeps it stable. But if you lighten it a little bit, you'll gain a little maneuverability. You'll lose maybe a little bit of inherent stability, but you'll gain some maneuverability. This is the case on a lot of aircraft, actually. It's always a trade-off. Uh, so, um, this worked out pretty well. These are just wire nuts that you can get at the hardware store. They come in different sizes, so you can play with different weights. These are uh, really light ones, the yellow ones. And uh, it seemed to help. Um, the thing pitched and rolled a little differently, but I seem to have a little bit more control of it. This, of course, all this missing stuff was from the uh, hack last week with the camera to lighten it and all that. Some holes drilled in the canopy here and here kind of help take advantage of the prop wash coming down to keep the battery cool while you're running. Give you a little longer flight time. This one weighs in right now at 4.4 ounces. It started out at, let's see, 4.8 ounces. And all that stuff that I took off, if we throw all that on the scale, we'll get an idea of how much weight savings there was in that. And that ends up being about 11 grams, 0.3 to 0.4 ounces. So that was a, a pretty significant savings. Plus, uh, it's off from this moment arm back here. So, you know, it uh, should require less torque back here to move this out of alignment. So, we're going to go do some test flights with different weights on them and see how it works indoors, then take it outdoors and have some fun. Here we go. Let's take a look at what the fly bar is really doing. I'm going to fire this up and give it full throttle and then tilt it back and forth like this. Keep your eye on the top rotors and the fly bar as it spins and watch how they interact. Okay, here we go. See how it's correcting? As the fly bar moves in relation to the top prop, it changes the pitch on the prop. And it corrects the craft to go the opposite direction to cancel out the roll or the pitch or the whatever it is that's happening. The fly bar will take care of that. And of course, it works in all directions. Side to side, fore and aft. And if you do a radical maneuver, you'll get blade strike. So that fly bar is, uh, is good and bad. If you want maneuverability, you've got to be able to pitch the craft and write it quickly. Of course, that would be in the realm of a 3D copter more than a coaxial, but we're trying to hack a coaxial to do a little bit more maneuverability in the sky. So let's try maybe this idea. 
All right, I'm going to start out with the orange weights first on the fly bar. And my test is going to be this. Launch from this box, hover in this area in front of the camera for at least five to ten seconds. That will prove my ability to maneuver the craft around in the room. So, let's launch. Oops, someone put a wall up. Now we go down to the itty bitty uh, yellow ones. You see a considerable difference. Yellow weights, test one. Yellow weights, test two. All right, or yellow weights, test three. Forward, aft, aft. So this tail prop turned out to be a pretty good mod, and uh, I'll show you how I did that. This is what the tail prop was to start with. Pretty tiny little thing. Didn't do much at all. I found that the packaging um, had a really nice piece of uh, plastic in there, and I thought, hey, you know, I bet I could make a new prop out of that. Let's see what it mics at. It's, um, it's pretty thick stuff. It's about 15 thousandths thick, maybe, something like that. And my chronometer's a little sticky here. It hasn't been out of the drawer for a while. There we go. Had to unlock it. Yeah, ten thousandths. This stuff's uh, ten thousandths thick. Pretty cool. So uh, we can make a prop out of that <clears throat> by cutting it into some strips. Um, the width of what your you know prop is going to be at the widest point. And then what you'll do is fold it in half with some adhesive right around this prop and uh, you'll end up with new blades and then you cut them to shape. But we're going to measure out what the widest portion of our prop is going to be. I'm going to make it 20, 22. Let's make it 20. Gut engineering at its finest here. So I'll put two marks at uh, 20 millimeters and then take a razor knife carefully and cut it on that line. There we have a piece 20 millimeters wide. Now we'll cut that in uh, some other pieces. And we'll cut these accordingly. I'm using a right angle to get a nice, nice clean right angle cut. And I know it's not crooked. Now, right at the middle mark on each one, we're going to score it with the knife. Don't cut it all the way through, just score it. Just helps with the fold. Okay, now fold them away from the score and it'll kind of almost break in half. Leave it like that. Next. We'll open them back up, lay them on a piece of cardboard, and give them a nice dusting of the spray adhesive of your choice. The 
That's it. Just a nice even coating. Don't forget to clean out the tip when you're done. Let's let that dry for a minute. These have dried for uh, a few minutes and now we'll take the prop and uh, find a spot on your prop that's a good defining location that you can repeat on each side so you keep them, you know, placed symmetrically. So you're going to want to put the prop in the center of the strip. Get it really nice and straight and press it down lightly. Now take the other part and fold it over and start from the tip and work your way back and pinch it together. And once you get it really stuck onto the prop area, uh, go ahead and just keep working around with your thumb and forefinger and really squish it down good. Get it really tight on there. Crank it right down. Squeeze it! And there you go. Now you have this really cool blank of a prop. Draw your ellipsoid on there, whatever you want, and cut it out and attach it and overload the hell out of that tiny little motor. A little run in there with the paint pen. That's okay. Off with the old mod and on with the new. I'm going to take this directly outside and check it out. Okay, we're going to do a flight with the orange weights. These are the heavy ones, so this will keep the craft a little more stable left, right, fore and aft, but it will also resist being pushed by the tail rotor. So, let's see. That's forward. See, it moves forward a bit. But as soon as a little bit of wind gets it, it'll get pushed really easily downwind. Let's see if we can bring it back over here and I'll catch it. Okay. Now let's switch up to the blue weights. These are a little bit lighter. You'll probably notice that uh, the helicopter will pitch around in the sky a little bit more. But I'll also gain a little bit of maneuverability with inputs from the tail. Here we go, blue weights. Dealing with a little bit of wind right now. Okay, now let's try the lightest ones I have, these little teeny yellow wire nuts, and we'll see what they do. We go. Whoa, one just flew off and hit me. <laughs> okay, we got a flight with the lightest weights now on the fly bar. Let's see what happens. Also, have a little bit of breeze right now. Forward input, got pretty good response. Backward, let me see if I can fly back towards me. That's a little better. Oh. So you get a little bit, a uh, little bit more maneuverability, but it's a little pitchier in the sky. Selfie loves it. All right, we're live here with Helmet Cam. Hey, doggies. Helmet Cam. Helmet Cam is next week's hack. Um, well, but it's in this week's video. You just don't get to see it this week. You just get to see what I'm doing with helmet cam, which I'm wearing right now. And I made just now in the middle of all of this craziness. And uh, we should be about ready to go there on that flight. So, uh, let's see. Let's review here. What do we got going? We've got that modified tail section right there that we were playing around with. And uh, that's a nice little ellipse now. It should move through the air nice. Got the orange weights going on with the uh, top prop, the bottom one of course just does its thing. Oh there's some holes by the way that I put right here to help with the uh, battery cooling while you're flying. Well there's a break in the wind so let's uh, let's get up in the air. Here we go. Oh 
Oh, I wish that back motor actually had some more guts to it. The prop's spinning okay, but you know, there's just no, uh, no real lift being generated. Of course, there's a wind it's fighting against right now, too. Okay, I gotta get back down in altitude, land over there by them chickens, and just go retrieve it, because that's how it goes sometimes. Out here, if there's just a little bit of wind, it doesn't take much, and uh, it gets real sketchy real quick. Via helmet cam, one more time. Let's try a launch. Uh, this is kind of fun. I noticed if you angle it, it will launch fully in the forward mode. Tracking through the sky, Leslie, away from you. Woohoo! Then you can whip it around and actually use the downwind thing to your advantage. Uh oh, oh, oh there's a big breeze right there. I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. <laughs> Into the front yard we go. Okay, well, we're sticking with the original tail rotor mod that spins pretty well with that tiny little motor. And uh, overall, we made a few improvements that make this a little bit of a easier flyer. So, uh, if you get a coaxial helicopter and you're so inclined, experiment. Try some of these. There's all kinds of other ideas, too, that I found online and have fun with it. What, Sophie? What, Sophie? She says we got to fly. So, anyway, um, till next time, keep on hacking.